Hello and good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we have with us Dr. Yaju Juang, who is a researcher from Itri, Taiwan, and uh, she will be joining us and talking to us about the advances in water treatment. So she's part of the water treatment division at Itri, and she'll be telling us on the innovative technologies that they are currently developing at Itri's water uh, water treatment division. So Itri and Sersen Technologies, uh, we have a part, we have a collaboration partnership, and we are currently promoting the technologies in India. Itri also has uh, signed a technical MOU with Elifo, and they have uh, through this MOU, they are also having they've conducted pilot plant trials at the Rani Tech CTP. And we'll be hearing a lot about the uh, data from the pilot plant trials and a lot more from Dr. Juang. So Dr. Juan, thank you for joining us on this webinar and talking to all of us today this morning. So over to thank you. you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I think, uh, can I have a start? Okay. Yeah. Let me share about the slide. Okay, can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. Hello everyone, this is Anne from E3 Taiwan, and I am a researcher of the uh, water treatment, uh, water technology research division of the MCL in E3. And today I would like to give a talk on the advances in wastewater management, especially for the E3's initiative. Okay, so I think let me have a brief introduction about what E3 is. Uh, the full name of the e is Industrial Technology Research Institute. And we are uh, one of the world's leading technology research institute aiming to innov innovate a uh, better future for the society. And I think we have many campuses around Taiwan and even we have some branches around the world. And the main campus is located in Xinju, we call as a uh, like the Silicon Valley of Taiwan and because we have many top semiconductor manufacturers and the top university in this city, we call it Sintu City. And each we have more than 6,000 of the employees and thousands of the PhD who are focused on the field of like uh, electronic information, green energy, uh, biomedical, mechanical and the material and chemical laboratory, we call it MCL. And our team, the division of the water technology research team is belong to the MCL. So in this slide, we can see a uh, overview of the Itri's water technology because uh, we have more than three decades of uh, experience and we have uh, developed a set of the wastewater treatment technology, including the high efficiency uh, chemical treatments and biological treatment and the water reclamation system as well as the sludge treatment for the sludge reductions. And I think in the recent year, the goal of our team has changed from the compliance with the environmental legislation and moved to the water and resource reclamations. So here in these four pictures, we can see that uh, each tree's water technology can be applied from the upstream to the downstream uh, applications like the uh, desalination of the seawater and the water purific purification for municipal wastewater and sewage treatment and also the industrial wastewater reclamation as well as the uh, decentralized water purification system we call it the DWTS. So later, I will introduce more about all this technology for you all. And here in this slide, we can see that each tree's water technology have variety of the water solution to solve all the clients facing problems. So we have more than three, uh, 30 years of the practical experience on the water treatment for serve the industrial like the uh, the popular in India, the dye, textile, metal surface treat, and the uh, paper and pop, and later industry petrochemicals, as well as in recent years, the high technology like the LED industrial and the uh, electronic industrials. 
So in this slide, we can see that each shows the capability on the system evaluation of the engineering design and the integration of the uh, competitive water solutions. So not only uh, for the, not only for the domestic practical experience uh, in high technology industry, traditional industry, as well as the public uh, supply system. We also have so many cases around the world, especially in the Southeast countries, so like in, uh, like shows here, the Singapore, mainland China, Malaysia, and Thailand. So I think now here, I would like to share uh, the more detail about our technologies. And the first one uh, would be the biological treatment technologies include the advanced process we call is BioNet and some anaerobic system uh, like the UASB and the AFB. So in this, in this slide, we can see that the BioNet technology we call as uh, an advanced biological treatment, which uh, have so many advantages like the low operational cost and capex and easy to operate and a very small footprint. So here in this uh, reactor uh, skin diagrams, we can see that the BioNet reactor contains the porous compressible carrier shows uh, in like these pictures, which offers very large surface area for the interception of, of suspended solid and the growth of spatial microorganisms. So that's why this is capable for the removal of the ammonium and dissolved organic from the solutions. And because of the bionet carrier contains very high uh, biomass concentration and diversity of the microbial populations. So uh, the bionet shows so many advantages for the clients. So this is very a uh, practical environmental technologies. And here I would like to share that what can we apply for and by the bion bionet technology. The applications we can see that we can use use it for the removal of the residual organic compounds, following by the secondary effluent to reduce the cost of the following treatments. And the second application is the pretreatment for the wastewater reclamation, and then uh, especially for the polishing light, like the case we apply in Indians' cases, the low strength wastewater treatment to protect the following process, like a prevention of the membrane falling phenomena. So after very long term operations and best, uh, best on our uh, previous experience, I think the BioNet has have some advantage about the operations. The first is that uh, this reactor is operated between fixed and expanded bait. So this carrier have very low abrasion since there's no very uh, vigorous stirring with the carriers. So that's why we can prevent the clogging problem because of the carrier is compressible. Okay, so here in this slide, you can see some uh, uh, full scale plant uh, pictures. Uh, on the left hand side is the full scale secondary efferent treatment plan. And the right hand side is the most recently implementation, which was 300,000 cubic meters per day uh, in Donggang River raw water pretreatment plan, and which offers half of the water supply of Kaohsiung City, which is in south of Taiwan. And here shows some results. Uh, you can see that the case of the Donggang River for the surface water treatments, uh, the water was taken from the river water and then flow into the uh, bionic plant for the uh, pre-treatment and afterward uh, will flow to the reservoir and then treated by the municipal water treatment plant. So here in these figures, we can see that it's satisfied for the ammonia removal by nitrification plus transfer to become nitrate or nitrite. So this is suitable for the pretreatment of, of municipal water treatment plant like a USTP. And here shows another case study in the, uh, in the petrochemical industry. Uh, so we can see that from this uh, flow diagram, after the pH adjustment, uh, the water was brought into two bionet reactors, which each one is around 800 cubic meters per day of the capacity. So we can see that this is capable 
for handling the variation of the influent quality with promising COD and as suspended solid removals. And you can see that this picture looks old because uh, this plan already operate for more than 25 years. Now it still operate. And this is the another case for the bionet, uh, which combine with the nitrification and the denitrification and apply in the LED industry. So we can see that uh, uh, this case that we use, we apply three uh, bionet tank as the nitrification reactor, and then uh, two the denitrification reactors. And this shows the pictures, and I think the construction has been accomplished in uh, 2011. And the left-hand side is the bionet tanks, and the right-hand side is the denitrification tanks. And here shows the table of the most of the full-scale bionet plants, and we have applied in so many industry lights, like the shoes manufacturing, uh, the some chemical industrial, and the food industry industrial and textiles. And the capacity is range from hundreds to thousands, even to uh, uh, hundreds MLD of the capacity. And most of them is for treatment uh, of the COD and some of them is for the ammonia removal. So this is very, uh, have very variety of the applications. And after the bionet, I would like to introduce another technology we call is the uh, upflow anaerobic sludge bed, uh, which we call is UASB. So we can see the design concept of this reactor. The uh, influent was pumped from the bottom of the tank and then upflow uh, and passed through by the gas. Uh, we call it three-phase separate to separate the gas uh, to biogas and the liquid and the solid part. So UASB is uh, very efficient uh, in the treatment of organic wastewater, especially for very uh, high COD value. So the organic are degradable, and, and then we can generate the biogas uh, for the reuse as uh, renewable energy. So we can see that here are shown some features about the UASB, like the low space requirement and the low operational cost, since we don't need too much aeration. So we can save a lot of energy consumptions. And one another advantage is that the biogas we collected from here can be used for an, an, a kind of a renewable energy. So this is applicable for some uh, high organic content industrial like the food, beverage, and paper mill, and some petrochemical industry. Okay, here in this slide shows the application of Idris UASB. I think this uh, technology has been established for more than three decades. And we have distributed so many patents around the world, like Taiwan's patent, China's patent, and Malaysia's patent. And we have uh, designed, in, designed the USB in more than 47 factories and have so many overseas applications. So we can see from this table, the COD in, uh, no matter in what kind of industry, the COD, in, COD inlet value is around thousands thousands and we can uh, achieve a quite good COD removal rate. And the another uh, biological treatment system we call is anaerobic fluidized bed, we call it AFB. And this technology, uh, the difference between the USB because we will put some uh, fine inner uh, carrier, some, uh, most of them are the silica sand and which can provide a very large surface area for the growth of the microorganism, especially for the anaerobic microorganisms. So that's why the uh, carrier are fluidized and which can enhance the mass transfer and degrade uh, the organic uh, pollutants, especially for the refractory organics. So this also have the features like uh, we don't need too much aeration and easy to operation and control and very small uh, footprint requirement. And for the spatial applications, uh, we mostly apply in the wastewater with uh, some bioinhibitors or the toxic compounds. And here in this slide, we can see the, the applications of Idris AFB and around the Taiwan. Uh, we can see that like in this case, they are 
amine to uh, remove the phenol, which is harmful uh, by microorganisms. Okay, so after the biological treatment, I would like to share some about uh, the physical and chemical treatment for the industrial applications. Uh, later, I will mention some like uh, the FBC, uh, F Benton family, like uh, we call it a kind of the AOP, advanced acidation process, and the EDR for ion separation, as well as the ultrasonic technology we call is USHS for sludge reductions. So the first one is the FBC, the total, the full name is the fluidized fat crystallization. And we have many patents around the world in like uh, in Europe, United States, in China. And this uh, fluidized fat use, uses the silica sand as a carrier to recover the metal salt or the inorganic ions from the wastewater in the crystal form. So the recovery, the recycle of the flow can provide the mixing to maintain the same fluid size and addition of the chemical reagent to provide a, a spatial environment, which is super saturation conditions for the crystal formation. So that afterward, uh, the, 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 the crystal will start to aging and growth. So the high purity crystal are discharged when the size is grow to one to two millimeters of the diameters. So this apply this can uh, this shows some features like the uh, can be used for the removal of inorganic ions from the solutions and can reduce large amount of the sludge and recover the variable resource in the crystal form. So, which can be applied for some uh, ion removal like the fluoride, arsenic, the hardness, calcium, magnesium, phosphate, as well as the ammonia and some heavy metal ions from the solutions. And here in this slide shows the cases of the FBC applications. Uh, I think recently we have installed uh, for some FBC reactors. Uh, for in northern Singapore for the treatment of the fluoride content wastewater in some DRAN high technology beds. And the another physical chemical process uh, we call is the Fenton reactor. I think some of you have uh, heard about this technology. We call it the Fenton process. This is a kind of advanced oxidation process. We call it ALP uh, and which apply uh, uh, which uses the uh, Fenton reaction like the hydrogen peroxide and the ferrous ion in, uh, to generate the OH radical in the solution for the uh, oxidations because this is a quite strong oxidant. Okay, so uh, normally Fenton family have to divide into many, uh, more than, I think it's more than four. And uh, two of them are commonly applied in, uh, in many interest cases, and we also have many patterns. The first one is the ferrofenton. Uh, the ferrofenton is for the free treatment of the high strength wastewater, and some of them is to for the treatment of thousands of, uh, or ten thousands of the COD value in that waters. And the second, the second one is the FBR fenton, is especially for the treatment of the residual refractory compounds for the polishing of wastewater. So I think uh, I can share some more detail about these two kinds of uh, fenton process. The first one is the FBR fenton. This, fin, uh, this process, uh, we can see that the schematic diagram of the FBR Fenton reactor. Uh, we can see on the bottom, the Fenton reagent like the uh, ferrous chloride and the peroxide was introduced into the bottom of the reactor. And then the supported ferric ox oxyhydroxide, FeOH, was formed by the crystallization onto the surface of the grain. So you can see the like, which is like the kosher structure. And therefore the oxidation of the organic compounds by the oil radicals and the crystallization of the ferric ion with the kosher structure can occur in the same time in this system. So this is capable for the application in the refractory wastewater and some deep color wastewater like uh, some cases in India and the surfactant containing wastewaters. And 
uh, I think maybe you can take a look on this picture and the left one, is, left one is the raw water and with the increase of the reaction time, we can see the color removal rate increased. And the another phantom process we call is ferrofenton. Uh, uh, the ferrofenton process is especially for treating the extremely high COD value I have mentioned is like thousands and over 10,000 milligram per liter of the inlet COD value. Because uh, generally the traditional uh, phantom process produce very large amount of the uh, iron sludges like uh, these equ equations. So in comparison to the traditional phantom process, the phantom reaction, uh, the ferrofenton can reduce very large amount of the iron sludge, iron sludge in this system uh, because of uh, this technology applies the uh, oxide and the electro generated ferrous iron produced from the ferric sulfate. And in the electrodialysis, uh, in the ele electrolysis system, the primary reaction on the cathode uh, is the ferric will keep reduced to become ferrous iron. Therefore, the ferric uh, sludge will not be produced by the reduction of, uh, of the ferrous ion, ferric ions, and thus reduce the 80 percentage of the iron sludge in these reactions. Okay, one more another technology we call is the ED or EDR technology. And this case is especially for the ion separations, uh, like the desalination, purification, all the reconcent reconcentration. And we also have set uh, install a pilot in Ronitech CTD. And later I can share some experience about the pilot test. And let me have a brief introduction about what ED or what EDR is. ED we call as an electrodialysis, which can remove the ions from the solution by, uh, by using the electric, uh, electrical charge to separate the ions. And, but among them, we also have some ion exchange membrane. So when the system operated, the cation can migrate to the uh, cathode and the anion can migrate to the anion. And what is the EDR? The EDR, we have uh, one more, it's the reversible. So the principle of the EDR is that we can reverse the polarity of the electrode periodically to prevent the scaling or the falling phenomena of the ion exchange membrane. And we also have many patterns around the world about the ED or EDR process. And this uh, shows many advantage about the EDR technologies, like the water softening without the chemical additions. And the EDR can be applied for the removal of ions like the sodium chloride, calcium, magnesium, sulfate, and nitrate from the waters, and which is capable to treat the low-grade influence with high recovery rate and high desalination efficiency. And here shows the typical typical EDR system. So we can see that there is a pre filters and then uh, a raw water tank and concentrate tank. And in the middle part is the EDR stack, which controlled by the control panel and uh, uh, which and the connect to the power supply. And also have a dosing chemical tank for the CIP. And after the treatment, we will produce two two water uh, two two set of the waters. Uh, the first one is the reclaimed water, and second one is the concentrated water, which can be uh, re recirculated for increase the water recovery rate. And here shows the components in EDR system, uh, which include the uh, spatial anode, we call it insoluble anodes and the uh, uh, ion exchange membranes, the modules, uh, the membrane stakes, uh, the uh, polarity re reserve, reversible uh, controller and the uh, control panel as well as the power supply. And here shows the uh, EDR application about each is EDR uh, have been extensively applied uh, around the world and used in so many uh, different kinds of industry like the industrial process water and cooling water reclamation. And some of them is used for the groundwater, river water or seawater desalinations. 
Okay, so uh, now I would like to share about what a uh, sludge reduction technology we call is the ultrasonic technology, US. And this is a new technology to disintegrate of uh, the microorganism cells for the sludge reduction. And this, uh, the principle of the US technology is by the high pre frequency of the ultrasound can produce the caviation and the, the micro bubbles. And afterward, uh, in the system can produce a large amount of the free radicals to enhance the sludge uh, disintegrations. Therefore, the ultrasonic can be applied and combined with the biological uh, treatment easily uh, with very small footprint and uh, very uh, low cost, with very low cost. And here we can see the hardware of the ultrasound technology of e -trees. You can see it's combined with the converter and the booster and the homes. And here shows the reactor design. As for the application of the ultrasound technology for the uh, waste sludge treatment, normally this can be uh, applied uh, to, to, to two kind of the applications. Like the first one is the combination with aerobic biological uh, treatment, which uh, we can treat the sludge joint, uh, joint, joint out, uh, sludge joint by the secondary clarifier for the sludge hydrolysis. And for the application in the anaerobic digestion, we can see that uh, after the hydrolysis by the ultrasonic, we can further improve the biodegradation capability and the biogas productions. Okay, I think most of the technology I have mentioned are normally applied in the industrial wastewater treatment plant. And rather than the technology for the industrial applications, Qwater is the, another product for domestic water usage. And this product is classified as the DWTS, we call it the Decentralized Water Treatment System, DWTS. Uh, I think this uh, product product can be used in uh, like uh, most of the rural area in India because some of, of the places or the village is lack of the pipeline constructions and uh, very lack of uh, very shortage of uh, the water resource or the water treatment facilities. Therefore, the key water can be the solution for providing the remote area a qualified drinking water. And why we call it Q water, because uh, this product have the uh, features like the quick and quality and the quantities. And also they have been uh, widely applied in some remote area, like uh, uh, some rural area school, elementary school, and for the disaster relief and the foreign remote area. And also this product, we, we get the, uh, uh, we have obtained the CE certification from Europe. So we have uh, is export some uh, Qwater into the another countries. And let's talk about uh, Qwater's features. The first Q is the quick, a bit a uh, means that which can be assembled within 20 minutes by two persons only. And the another Q is the quality because which can treat high turbidity water in that water and produce the water conforming to drinking water standards. And this mostly, uh, most of the, uh, most of the concept uh, consists of these uh, components like the sloping plate uh, for the sed sedimentation of the particulates and a bionet uh, for the removal of the acids or the uh, polishing of the water quality. And some of them we use the UF membrane or our membrane for the desalination as well as the disinfection by UVC LED. And the third Q is the quantity because uh, within the compact size, uh, which can produce a larger amount of the clean water, like uh, uh, the pro production is uh, 15 cubic meters per day in very small space, only 2.5 meters square cubic meters. So uh, we can see that one Q water can provide at least six. 60% of the community or provide 7,000, more than 7,000 people for drinking. 
And here shows so many different kind of QR facilities. We can combine with the renewable energy like wind power and solar power. And we can combine with many different kind of traffic tool like boat, car. And we also have the truck, truck style. And the QR has been extensively applied in so many countries around the world. You can see that uh, like uh, in Africa, in China, Taiwan, we have many cases in Poland, as well as in the United States. So I think uh, from now is like uh, the most of the technology of each water team. And maybe we can have uh, like a QA session, okay? Thank you, Dr. Zhuang. That was a very good first half session. So at this point, maybe we could take in some questions from any uh, from the participants if they would like to ask Dr. Zhuang. Uh, we already have a question that's been sent in. Uh, they would like to know uh, from Mr. Baojian, who would like to know what would be the operating costs for the Bionet plant uh, okay. for 300, uh, for, uh, for, this is for water supply in the city, so for municipal water treatment. And can the capacity be increased, or do you recommend several such plants? Okay, I think for the capital cost, uh, for the operational cost is quite low. That's why most of the Taiwan's industry has applied this kind of technology for the polishing for sewage treatment. And in some cases, uh, let me have uh, like an example in 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 Taiwan's cases for the operational cost. I think it's less than. Uh, two rupees uh, per cubic meters of the treating water. So it's quite low. So it's quite low. And what about for the treatment capacity? Can we uh, increase it? Do you uh, recommend one big system or several, uh, several, yeah. uh, several such plants? Several. Uh, I think this is capable because, like uh, some in some cases of, of Taiwan, like uh, the most recent one, uh, the three hundred a thousand, three hundred thousand cubic meters of, of a day of the treatment capacity, and in some cases, in some cases of uh, uh, some industry application, they have divided into two or three, even uh, like a parallel of the bionet tank. To for the larger of uh, the larger of the treatment pump, so this is applicable. Uh, and uh, what is the lifespan of the product? The lifespan. Uh, I have shown uh, uh, an example for the petrochemical applications. Let that one has a uh, stable uh, operation for more than twenty five years. So uh, we have to say that uh, almost no too much deterioration about the systems. And this is very stable operation and very easy to operation. That's why most of the clients choose this kind of product. And uh, we have another question from Mr. Suresh Kachi who would like to know what is the smallest size of reactor that smallest size, uh, smallest capacity that can be adopted? Uh, how small? Uh, you, you mean the bionet? Mm, and yeah. uh, I think uh, we have uh, many stages, <clears throat> like we apply in the running tech, we have the small pilot, right? We have small pilot, uh, just like a one or less than five cubic meters per day of capacity. So normally we will customize what clients need to design the reactor for you. Uh, okay, and uh, we have uh, Dr. Vidya Raghuraman, who would like to know more about Q water. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, but so maybe I could uh, reframe it and say uh, so this Q water, uh, are you supplying it to other countries or so is it like a package system that you are shipping? Yeah, this is a package system and can be customized case by case because some of the region is applied for the, like the river water or surface water, groundwater, and some cases is, is applied for the seawater desalination. So this is case by case and package. You can customize it depending on the yeah. application, the yes. influent as well. Yeah, okay. so that's why you can see so many different kind of Q water you have combined with the renewable energy, we have combined with truck, car, even a boat. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, we have another question from Mr. Sajid Hussain, who would like to know, can we use a fluid bed crystallizer for spent chrome liquor in tanneries? Chrome? Uh, I think this is possible, but I, I forgot some of the, the information. If he needs more detailed information, I think he can email you and I can pass some information to him. Okay, okay. Um, and he's got one more question. What do you do with iron sludge in the Fenton reactor system? Iron sludge? Uh, I think some of that uh, in, in the ferro Fenton system, uh, almost a very less amount of the iron sludge produced. And in some cases, I have to do the uh, small, small pilot test, even no sludge uh, production. And he mentioned about the iron sludge is mostly produced in traditional Fenton process, I think. And normally they will do like the dewatering and uh, some other filter bed uh, process. Um. Okay, we'll take one more last question. Uh, can this ultrasound technology be used for treating water on a large scale? Large scale, yeah, this is capable, yeah. And can be customized. And some of them, I think in case of what kind of uh, water you want to treat it, and we can customize and design for you. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you uh, everybody for your questions. We'll be having another Q&A session uh, after, at the end of the session as well. So there are some questions which are unanswered, which we will answer at the end of the session. Thank you. Dr. Zhuang, if you would like to carry on. Yeah. Okay, so I think now I can start with the second part is the strategy, like the water solution for the zero liquid discharge. And I will talk more about the innovative water treatment, especially for the industrial wastewater treatment. And later, like the uh, CDI, MD, as well as the F4 and R2A. And as we know that the ZLD policy has been established in India since uh, like 2008 and have been implemented in 2011, especially in Tamil Nadu state, which is very shortage of the water resources. And in recent years, Indian central government has extended the ZLD policy to range, uh, range of the industrial sector like the power, steel, pharmaceutical, the chemical, textile, as well as the food uh, industrial. So I think most of you know about the uh, operation and maintain maintenance issues about the zero liquid discharge as well as the zero waste disposal issues. And here we have made three issues. The first issue is how to reduce the ZLD cost. This has to be done by the reduction of the chemical usage and the energy consumption for the uh, water recovery system. And this can be done by using some advanced biological treatment system for the ammonia as well as the COD removal to prevent the following process as problem like the membrane falling phenomena and promote the recovery rate. And the second, uh, the second solution is that you can try to use the energy saving technology to minimize the RO rejection concentration, means that we can reduce the brine uh, the amount of the brine into the thermal system. And the second issue is the, uh, how to reduce the GWD cost, it means that we have to, to reduce the amount of the solid waste, but I think you all know about that. Now it's incapable for the reuse. So in, in the meantime, that we have to think about that. Uh, the online separation and regeneration uh, system have to be uh, in, uh, develop it uh, in a short time and quite urgent. And this can be based by the membrane-based electro separation technology, means that we can separate the ions or the uh, uh, valuable resource in the liquid phase. And that's why we can reduce the mixed mix salt amount and uh, reduce the value of the brine into the air evaporators. And the third issue is by the automation we call is dynamic control of the, uh, the system performance by installation of the IoT system for ZLD or GWD, and which is aiming for the monitoring of the membrane falling scaling prevention and the automation of the chemical dosing as well as, well as the system optimization. 
And the first technology we, uh, first normal technology we call is CDI, capacitive deionization, uh, CDI. The principle of the CDI is the salt or ions can be removed from the solution by applying a spatial electrical charge, like a one to two voltage between two poles electrode. And uh, we can see that advantage of the CDI while, sorry, while under under the lower conductivity, which uh, the CDI can achieve low energy consumption and less falling phenomena and relatively higher water recovery rate. And the features of each, each CDI is the modification of the electron material by in situ synthesis of the anatase titanium dioxide and the activated carbon. So this is a kind of a modified uh, carbon uh, electron material. And after the modification, we can see that uh, the irreversible absorption uh, can be re prevented and also improve the electrosorption abilities. And the second uh, normal technology is the membrane distillation we call it is MD. This is a thermally driven membrane separation process. So here in this, uh, in this schematic of the MD, we can see that the high temperature feed water uh, that will pass through this, this system and meanwhile the water molecular, especially for the vapor mo mo molecular, can penetrate to the another side by the uh, porous hydrophobic membrane. So this can uh, be used for the seawater desalination and water recovery as well as the ZLD applications. And on the right hand side, you can see some VDM modules well, in Taiwan now we have, and now it's still testing. And the third technology is the for wall osmosis, we call it FO. The, I think the breakthrough strategy of each in desalination is the low energy consumption, means low energy requirement. So FO is one another choice which drives by the difference in uh, 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 osmotic pressure by uh, between the draw solution and the feed solutions. So each piece uh, FO using our patent polymeric solar solutions, which can easily separate by room temperature. So here in this picture, we can see that there are two phase and one is the draw solution phase and the another side is the water solution phase. It means that the draw solution is recoverable and recyclable. So uh, on the right hand side, you can see the pilot of uh, each is FO. And uh, we have do some uh, pilot test and we can see the preliminary result of the, uh, the pilot test. It means that the RO rejection after the treatment, which the rejection can be concentrated by this pilot to reach concentration ratio of around 4.5. Okay, I think apart from the enhancement of the water recovery rate by CDI, FO, MD, or other EDR process, the most urgent issue is the mixed salt with the in the zero liquid uh, GLD plants. It means that the solid waste now is still incapable for the reuse. It means that the development of the online soil recovery system in liquid phase is so important because this is the most urgent issue in India or around the world who have the ZLD policies. And here we would like to share a novel technology we call its recovery of the acid and alkaline. We call it Itris R2A. And the R2A technology can affect I think your screen is frozen, Dr. Zhuang. Um, just try. Sorry, everybody, I think that just appears to be a technical glitch. Uh, I think Dr. Juan's screen has just frozen.
Okay. Oh, Dr. Oh, Jenny, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I think your I... screen uh, froze. It's no problem. Uh, you could just carry on. I think you'll be froze at the R2A slide. Okay, so, sorry. I think there are some uh, internet issues. Uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. I Have just thought out why. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> no I can problem. start. Okay. Yeah, you can so start. You can Thank you. My slide, right? R2A. I think uh, it just froze when you went on to the R2A. Okay, let me share my slide again. Yeah. Okay, so now it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So maybe I can restart uh, about yeah, the R2A yeah. part. Yeah. So R2A is a kind of novel technology of E3. We call it the recovery of acid and alkaline. So we call it R2A. And this technology can be effectively separate the cation and the anion from aqueous solution and further produce the acid and caustic with normal arrangement of the electrodialysis modules. So this system can act as a key role in the future for accomplishing the ZLD or the ZWD process. And I think uh, from this flow diagram, we can see that after pre-treatment, the water will mostly uh, treated by the UF or R process. And after RO, uh, normally they will have a very large amount of the brine will pump into the thermal system, although it's still very high energy consumptions. And we would suggest to have a, a reconcentration, a reconcentration technology like the RO and afterward, we can see that uh, the Afterward, the uh, reconcentration uh, reject can pump into the R2A system to produce uh, the variable resource like the sodium hydroxide, the chloric acid, sulfuric acid, even other, as well as the globus salts. Okay, so in this slide, we can see the mechanism of, about how R2A works. This is a, a, an ion, ion exchange membrane process applied with some selective membranes to split the water into the proton and hydroxyl group for acid and alkaline production. Uh, and I think some of the clients ask us to produce what they desire to have about like the globus salt like uh, you can apply in the textile or some later industry. So this uh, technology is capable for the applying in the brine recovery and the production of the acid, caustic, and global salt from the mixed salt in liquid phase. So we don't need the thermal process, means that we can reduce very large amount of, of the energy consumption and can act as a pre-treatment for the final thermal system or the treater of the ZLD process. And now R2A is under developing and we think the nearly feature, the R2A can act as a key role for the accomplishing of a ZLD or ZWD. And this system can be customized case by case with the spatial module design and by the automation uh, controlling and the allowance of the stack expansion. So like in uh, some problem of uh, your clients, they want to extend the treating amount of the, uh, of the technology. So this is uh, capable for the extension. extension. Sorry. So now I would like to share some pilot study of our case in Ronnie Tech because we try to use some pilot for the performance enhancement for the CTP in Ronnie Tech. And in this pilot study project, I think the CPC and APOCOEGP act as the bridge of Indian uh, and China and Taiwan. And during these years, the joint cooperation, like the technical exchange, training, research, demo site, business model, as well as the capacity building have been held by CPC. And therefore, we each and uh, our Indian partner, like partners like Susan, now have a shared vision on the green technology to have a bit better future. And here in this slide shows the, uh, the treatment process for the tannery wastewater treatment plants. And we can see the diagram, uh, the flow diagram like, like, in, like uh, shows in this slide, uh, the water will pass through the 
are treated by the bar screen, the oil separation, the coagulation sedimentation. And afterward, we have installed two pilots, uh, of, uh, two pilots in running tech, which uh, are the MBR and the bionic system for the biological polishing, like to remove of the COD as well as the ammonia. And afterward, before, uh, afterward, the water will pump into the uh, ZLD process, we call it like a UFRO. And the EDR pilot was installed to collect and treat the RO rejection for minimizing the index value of the brine to the thermal system. So um, we, we suggest this uh, flow diagram, which can solve the urgent issue in most of the tannery wastewater treatment plant, like the, to reduce the high loading of the evaporator and increase the recovery rate and uh, reduce the energy consumption as well. Also, uh, also we can see that after we polish in the water qualities, the condensate can be reused because of the absence of the ammonia. And here in these pictures, we can see the bionic pilot in running tech CTP. And everyone in running tech uh, CTP assist us to install the pilot. And this is the GM, Mr. Sivakuma, who helped us a lot. And we can see that it, this is the bionic carrier. And this is the tank and the full picture of the pilot. And from the preliminary study of our more than 200 days of operation, uh, here in this uh, slide, we can see the turbidity removal as well as the ammonia removal rate. And the blue dot is the inlet turbidity. The red dot is the outlet turbidity. We can see that the average inlet and outlet turbidity are 22.7 and 6.3 NTU respectively. It means that it shows a good particulate removal performance, especially in the extreme inlet, uh, extreme inlet uh, water qualities. And on the other hand, we can see the ammonia removal, the blue dot and the red dot are the inlet and outlet respectively. You can see the removal performance is mainly rely on the uh, inlet ammonia concentration, which a higher ammonia removal rate uh, uh, is mostly uh, higher than 90 percentage and even reach 98 percent of the ammonia removal can be obtained, obtained while treating very high amount of the ammonia wastewater. And here shows some picture of the uh, FBR pilot we installed. We installed in a running tank, uh, which use Taiwan's uh, membrane uh, for the MBR system, and we can reach around uh, six. Uh, 60 to 80 percent of the high uh, COD removal rate. And the another pilot is the EDR in running tech CTP and all the components are assembled in the 20 feet containers. So uh, after the treatment by the EDR we can reduce the amount into the evaporator system and this is the IoT control uh, page and the another. This, the another picture is the uh, EDR stacks and uh, valve pipes and uh, all the tanks. And this is Mr. Latif who helped us to operate the EDR system. So here we can see the some uh, result of the EDR pilots because we want to solve the problem about how to reduce the loading of the evaporate. So you can see that uh, after after using after after we applying the EDR system, the EDR can concentrate the R rejection from 82.6 and to more than 130 uh, mini mini simuls per centimeters. So on the other hand, we can see that the uh, the brine recovery of the system is more than 40 percent of the recovery rate. And regarding to the energy consumption, we have uh, re records from the rectifier. The total energy consumption of this pilot is around 22.6 kilowatts per cubic meters of the treating amount. And we all of the pilot we installed in Ronnie Tech, we have the we have uh, we have is the uh, IoT. Uh, remote data, so we can check from online and discuss with Ronnie Tech's partners.
and which are come, uh, controlled by the HBMI, uh, we call it a human machine interface. And here we would like to share is the cost assessment for the ZLD improvement. And this table can be uh, applied in most of the, uh, most of the clients uh, who want to achieve more uh, energy saving uh, ZLD process. So here we can see that we have the existing process and the right hand side is the upgradation by e water technology. And the left hand side here, we have many different kinds of process like the PST, MBR, and the Bionet of E3, and the are all your existing uh, process, and the EDR of Tyro uh, E3s, MEE, and then the red one is the total OPEX. So here from the, this part, we can see that in the, uh, the operational cost of the existing process is like this, and the red one is the uh, the operational cost after the improvement by e water technology. So we can see that uh, after using e water technology, we can reduce large amount of the brine into the MEE system and also re reduce the yearly OPEC uh, to at least uh, uh, three crosses rubies. So this is a quite big value of the uh, cost reductions. And meanwhile, not only for the reduction of the OPEX, for the new ZLD plants, the CAPEX can also be reduced uh, for the cases of the running tech. Like we can reduce 40% uh, of the brine into the thermal system. It means that what, if we want to install the new uh, uh, ZLD process, that we can reduce the CAPEX a lot. And now I would like to have a short summary of, uh, of the ZLD uh, process by the issues technology that we have to think the zero waste disposal to achieve the zero liquid discharge by the integration of the complete process to avoid the following problems. So we have to do something like the improvement of the reused water quality by the advanced biological treatment. It's like to polishing and prevention of the following problems. And the second issue is that we have to reduce the need of the uh, evaporation, crystallization, and cheaters, and focus on the reduction of the brine concentrate and increase the water recovery rate by the wastewater reclamation system. And even now we can try to focus on the novel technology which can uh, recover the valuable resource like R2A system for the uh, salt recovery for uh, and turn back to the, to the previous uh, unit or the, another industry for the reuse. Okay, now in this, in this slide, I would like to say that rather than the ZLD plan, I think some of the clients in India also ask about the improve, improvement of non-ZLD plans uh, because they have met some urgent issue like the operational cost of some uh, filter medias like the ACF and their effluent water quality exceed the standards. So here in this slide, I, I have simplified the flow diagram of the previous slide. We can see that uh, this is mostly designed in the STP, CTP, or ET, uh, ETP. And after the tube settlers and the DMF, the ACF have uh, activated carbon filters, sometimes have the operation, you know, operation and maintenance issues, and sometimes the effluent, like the BOD, COD, and ammonia, ammonia over the tolerance limit. And so here we suggest the, for the plant operation, you can directly try to install the BioNet system. So the BioNet system can be installed after the settler for polishing by the degradation of the organic and the removal of the suspended solid. And sometimes the following ACF can even be removed in the flow diagram. So you can save a lot of the OM operate OPEX operational cost. And here we have some uh, uh, result of the BioNet pilot in the northern India. And this pilot have uh, continuous continuously operation for around uh, two months. 
And if we can see from these figures, we have the VOD as well, uh, VOD and TSS and then the COD removal. And the blue light is the inlet and the red line is the outlet. And from the VOD data, we can see that uh, the blue dot line, this line is the FN standard of the VOD is 30 milligram per liters. So in these figures, we can see that the VOD in the discharge water from the bionet can directly meet the requirement of the FN standard which is they, all of them are lower than the uh, FN standard. And if we even don't, uh, we even don't need any further reduce, uh, uh, further following process. It means that we even, uh, we don't have to use the following like the DMF, ACF, and we can reach this kind of performance. And also after the treatment by the bionet, uh, which you can reduce the loading of the following process if they, uh, they, they have the, the, some filter medias. And for the total suspended solid and the COD removal rate, uh, the same, the blue line is the inlet and the red line is the outlet. And the black dot line is the discharge water quality of the entire plant now. So in these two figures, we can see that in comparison to the effort of the entire treatment of the CTP, we can achieve an even better water quality, uh, which, uh, which only treated by Bionet only. So this is quite satisfied about, about this kind of uh, technologies. So here I would like to make a conclusion of issues water technology. I think until now, everybody know about that. We have so many water solutions. So for the weather, if we want to remove the organics, the ions, uh, nitrate, ammonians, we can, uh, we can buy, a, we can treat it by, uh, it can be treated by the Bionet, UASB, anaerobic fruit dispect, FBC, as, as well as the Fenton family, like ferrofenton and FBR. And if you want to, do the treatment of the organic sludge. This can be can be done by the ultrasonic technology as well as the anaerobic digestion digestion for the biogas uh, collection for uh, apply in the case of the renewable energy. And now on this stage, we have to focus on the purification, separation, and reclamation of the GLD. Um, of the GLD. So uh, for the desalination and concentration, the technology we can apply is the NF and EDR, CDI, MD, and F4. And in the future, now we can try to think about to, to do the liquid phase resource recovery by the R2A system. And all of them, we have to integrate with the IoT, uh, IoT system we call it each is smart eye water uh, service ready package for the monitoring and the automations. So our technology have been extensively used in so many countries like Japan, Korea, uh, Philippines, China, Thailand, Myanmar, and Indonesia. And now we try to separate with our partner to Indian's market. And uh, most of the client ask, what can we do? I have to say, we can do everything like the technology license training, evaluation, even the testing, verification, system integration, as well as the, like, the inspection with, with you guys. So uh, this, is the, uh, this is what we can do. And if you have any questions, uh, I think you can, we can have a collaboration in the future. And for Indian CTP, uh, what, what we can do is for, uh, help you to build the sustainable water technology and the, uh, the smart system for reducing the operational cost or the following problem like the falling and scaling membrane and reduce the cost of everything in the CTP. And you, if you are interested in Itri's water technology, please uh, Google search Itri Waters. And this is our website. And we all of the technology have short on this website. Definitely, we have the English version, so no worry. Yeah. Okay, I think I have finished all my presentations. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Dr. Joang. I think that was an excellent presentation and very detailed. So thank you very much for that. I'll, I, especially the last slide where you put in a nice summary of your entire water treatment package. I think that was an excellent slide. It was very well presented and summarized. So we have some more questions. So uh, from all our wonderful participants, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, so maybe we could go into some questions now. We have a question from Dr. Uh, Akmez, uh, who would uh, like to know uh, on what, uh, have you done any work on PFOs and PFAs for the electronic industry and have you treated TMAH? Yeah, we have some case studies about this kind of industry waste water treatment because some of the, uh, the ingredient is commonly uh, appears in the high technologies applications and because of uh, some data we can uh, share too much if they have the uh, further questions I think we can uh, we can share by the email uh, then we have another question from uh, if two questions from Mr. Sajid Hussain would like to know one is what is the typical flux rate for your membrane distillation and uh, how, which industries has it been applied to and how long is it in operation for? Uh, this technology now is like uh, under development. So we are now still trying to uh, enlarge the scale. So I think uh, we have to stage by stage for the MD, uh, MD devel development. And I think in the nearly future, we can share more data to all, to all of you. Okay. And uh, one more question from him is, is R2A based on bipolar membrane electrodialysis any real application? Yeah, it's kind of the membrane-based technology. And some of the technology were used by bipolar membranes for split the water to become like the proton and the hydroxyl group. And then the proton can combine with the, like the chloride uh, or the sulfate to become sulfuric acid or the chloric acid. And the hydroxyl group can combine with the sodium to become the sodium hydroxide or the other byproduct. And we always say that r way is not only by using the uh, bipolar membrane, we can also by the spatial, uh, by the spatial, uh, how can I say, by the spatial arrangement of the electrolysis system because some of the client, they want to recover it, the, like uh, the global soft, sodium sulfate. So this is based on the customization of the module design. And the BPM is a kind of the choice, one of the choice. Okay, thanks. Uh, we have another question from Ms. Kalaivani, uh, who would like to know, is there any solution to reduce the RO reject salt? RO reject salt, you, you mean in the liquid, liquid solutions? Yeah, I think uh, I have shared some some technologies like the EDR system, the CDI system, and uh, I think the most mature uh, process is the EDR system. And Dr. Cheney also know about this technology because we shows very satisfying result in the Ronitex pilot test, especially for the reduction of the brine. Uh, brine volumes to the following thermal system. So you can see that from the cost assessment tables, which we can uh, reduce a large amount of the, uh, the volume of the, the brine. So the, the OPEX can also be reduced. And if you want to ins, ins, uh, design a new ZLD plant, means that the CAPEX of your ZLD process can also be reduced. Thank you. We have uh, one question from Latif, who would like to know what is the material of construction of your ion exchange membranes in the EDR? Yeah, I think it's mostly like a, a resin, resins. It's a, like a polymeric structure which you have some ion groups uh, on the surface of the membrane. So that's why we can choose what kind of the ion can penetrate uh, by the uh, membrane to the another side. So means that uh, we always say this is a selective membrane. And uh, let's, uh, what, what my answer about this, this kind of product. Okay. And one more thing that I have to say that I now have uh, some, some industry have developed 
uh, have their own ion exchange membrane. And we each now is also have our own uh, exchange membrane and even some selective membrane products, uh, which can be customized in the in our electrolysis system, no matter in like a ED, EDR system, and even uh, the other way system. Okay, I think uh, we've gone through most of the questions. So uh, thank you, Dr. Zhuang. I think that was an excellent presentation, very detailed. I think all our participants have enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you would like to know more about these technologies or would like to send any more questions to Dr. Zhuang, please do reach out to me on my email address, which was sent uh, during your registration confirmation. You would have seen it. It's chani.rallin at sersintech.com. So please do send me your questions and we could even discuss it further. Even if you'd like to know more information about the Bionet system, EDR system, please do let us know. We're also in the process of uh, having full scale plants at different CTP sites. So if you're inst interested in installing these technologies also do reach out. Thank you again to everybody, all the participants. Thank you, Dr. Zhuang again. Thank you and hope to see you all very soon in the real world. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.